Hey there, it's Nathalie. <laughs> Welcome back. Is this crazy time or what? My gosh, uh, there's no fabric, ribbons, buttons, bias tape, sewing machines. Amazon is out of sewing machines, and our Walmart is out of sewing machines, and QVC and HSN have just like tiny little bits of very expensive sewing machines left. Oh my gosh, is it a sewing revival? How long will it last? Who knows? Anyway, so I ventured out with my mask, of course, to our Walmart, and what they had left was two little packages, there it is, two little packages of fat quarters, this one that was already broken, it still had its tag on it. And they had these two little bundles. And I'm down to scraps. And I've dug deep in my stash, but I was decluttering and getting rid of a bunch of stuff. But I didn't get rid of everything. So that's been a good thing. Anyway, so what I'm going to show you today is how to do the ponytail scrub cap using fat quarters or use what you have where you're at, what is that to quote? Do what you can, where you're at with what you have. So that's what I'm going to try to do today and show you what you can do. And I'm going to show you two ways, one on the ties using elastic and then one with no elastic. So y'all don't go away. It's, it's going to do, I'm going to do real time because I end up with so many questions. So it's on the, so you can fast forward through stuff. I'll put some timestamps in the description box below. So ahead of time, I want to ask you, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, like, and share, and uh, don't go away. Okay, I want to show y'all something real quick. If you don't want to watch this at normal speed, you want to slow it down, or you want to speed it up so it's real fast. And hurry, 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 get to the end of it. I've, I've, got, to, I've got stuff I've got to do. Anyway, when you open up your YouTube, my YouTube video, hello, there I am. Uh, click on settings, that little gear right there. And you'll see playback speed, normal. Or you can slow it down or speed it up. So I didn't know if you knew that was there. That was new for me. And on your cell phone, it looks a little different. So on your cell phone, let me see if I can get this. I've got it opened up here. There's three little dots up here. And it brings up the same dialog box that has your playback speed, and then you can choose what kind of speed you want on that. Okay, just you needed to know that. All right, if you went to my website and downloaded the pattern, the ponytail, the scrub cap with a ponytail, so it comes in three, three sheets. You'll print it to the actual size and then cut it out. On the bottom part, I left a little bit of a an edge right here to tape this together. So I am going to go ahead and do that. Now, this is my first one and the mat, the marks don't meet up, but that's a that's okay. I know where this needs to be. So, I am just going to use this as my cut apart pattern. The new patterns that are on the website are accurate, they're right. And so you're going to be good to go. All right? So, and I've got two Fat, well, let me go ahead and finish talking about the pattern. All right. So when I've done this before, and to do it two parts, I have used about 14 inches for the for the top part of the head. If you could see me wrap my hand around my face, around my head, that top part. Okay, that's going to be here. It'll make sense in a second. You can take this piece. Get you a piece of regular copy paper, fold it in half, put that on there, cut around, mark around, or just cut around either way that you want to do it. That way you don't have to fool with the fold. You can just have it like that. All right. And then I also made a couple of cheater pieces. This is my cheater for the buttonholes. And so what I did is I just took a piece of cardstock and I had to make sure that I marked the front on both sides, like right there and there. That's the front. So whenever I mark my fabric, anyway, so what I did is I took a piece of cardstock and then I uh, marked my buttonholes, all right? And then I have an, also another piece that, so when I turn my fabric over, then my front is like that. 
Then I have another piece of cardstock that I have cut six and a half by two and three fourths, and that is for the button placement. So that, like, if you went onto the top of the hat, top of the cap, after it's seamed together, that's where your button would go. All right, six and a half by two and three fourths. What I'm going to do is take this. This is my second printed one, and I'm going to since I'm going to do it like 14 inches, I'm going to measure down seven and a fourth because I need a fourth of an inch for my seam allowance. My junk scissors. I don't cut paper with my good scissors. My kids would tell you they'd get their little heinies. Well, we won't talk about that because that was from back in the day in the 60s and the 70s. Anyway, don't use your good scissors to cut your paper with. All right, so now what I'm going to want to do, and I can either do this with paper or... And I'm going to make me a note to add a half an inch. Also, so that's going to give me a seam allowance going this way, so this is not going to make this too short. All right, it's going to be a long video because it's going to be real time. All right, let me set that aside for just a second and talk about the fabric. I've got two fat quarters. I've already washed them in hot water dried them and pressed them so they're not wrinkly and so that I can deal with them. So fabric has two two grains. It has this doesn't have a selvage on it but if like when it comes from the fa the factory it has edges on it that have like little pretty dots or names of the company or just a mis uh, an edge that's a finished edge. That's the selvage. So and I know that this would be if it had a selvage this is it because this is straight grain and it doesn't stretch. It might pull just a tiny bit, but this is the cross grain, and it has quite a bit of stretch. So the part that goes around the head, the top of the head, I like to cut that on the cross grain because it gives it just a little bit more give and stretch and fit also. All right, so I know that I've got, and a fat quarter is actually, most fabrics are 42 to 45, so it's usually 22 wide and a half a yard, 18 inches. <clears throat> so that's what a fat quarter is. All right. So now the decision is, what do I want to be on the on the back on the little heart shaped piece, and at the top of the head? And I think actually that I want this because this is what's going to show mostly. I think I want this. So I'm going to check my cross grain. This is going to be my the top of the head, and this piece and. This doesn't seem to have like a particular pattern that it's following, so it's, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> I'm going to fold this in half. In the cutting process, it does not matter if the pretty sides are together or not. But I, j just for now, I have this with the pretty side where they're facing each other. We're going to put this on the fold, and I actually, I don't need to put it on the fold and then have this wasted here, so I am going to move this down a little bit, find where my fold would be, and again, I'm on the cross grain, I'm on the stretchy part of this, so that's about where the fold would be. If you were going to do this lined, you would just cut two of these, and see, I still have some more, so I'm going to go ahead and go just a little bit further. And I'm on the fold of the fabric. Right there is the fold. It says fold, so I'm going to pin that to the fold of the fabric. And it tells you right here, cut one on the fold. I tried to uh, second guess all of the questions, but I've missed a few things in my process. And when you've been sewing as long as I have, sometimes you forget uh, even what we would consider really simple things. So, and since there is a sewing revival going on, there are no sewing machines anywhere. Uh, lots of people are learning how to sew, and this is a good 
little beginner project because it doesn't take a whole lot of detail. Okay. All right. So this is going to be our top piece, and this has a kind of a little bit of a curve, and it does. And this is the front edge because it's straight and it's got that stitching on it. So I am going to nip just a tiny little corner so that I will know that this is the center back of my uh, top of my headpiece. All right. So now I have this extra piece. And this one doesn't really matter whether it, there's a cat she's wanting to get up. Doesn't really matter whether it's straight or sideways. Okay, so it doesn't really matter as long as it's not like, I'm not going to cut it, this would be a, the bias. And there's like a lot of stretch on the bias. So that, that's another other lesson. So I'm just going to cut it like this. Go ahead and pin it in place. And if you wanted to put it on the fold, so for example, if you didn't do this and you had just this, and again, it doesn't matter whether the pretty sides are together or not. You could just fold that in half. And can your mind conceive of this, that you can actually turn that over and still cut that? You can actually do that. Or you can make the whole one like that and do it that way. So I'll go ahead and do this. Doesn't matter that the pattern is up or down as long as it's on the fold. If you feel like you have to be able to read the print, then you can turn it this way. But let me tell you about this. If you're going to do that, uh, let me show you what I just did a while ago, probably being too tired and I wasn't paying attention. Let me grab it real quick. Well, I don't see it, but I cut a crown piece out of a floral and it had stems and I had cut this piece with the stems going, the flowers were upside down. So I had to recut that one. So that's the only thing that you really need to kind of pay attention to. If it has a pattern that has a direction to it, you know, you don't want the horses running down the back of your neck, or maybe you do want the horses running down the back of your neck. I don't know. Anyway, so here's my fold of this, and I'm going to go ahead and nip a little notch in that also. Make sure I don't cut my fingers. And that's going to match, when I get ready to sew, it's going to match to the notch that's in this part. But that's in the sewing part. All right, so we have the top part of the head and the, the heart section at the back done. Now we need to cut the ponytail part. And again, with the cross grain. Now, I am going to cut this on the fold but I'm not going to cut this on the fold. I know that doesn't make sense to you, and you're going to think, what the heck is she talking about? I don't want to cut this twice. All right? So what I'm going to do, this is my cross grain. This looks like, does it matter which way it's going? I don't think it matters which way it's going, but it kind of looks like it needs, wants to go this way. I don't think it matters. I'm going to go this way. All right. So, again, it doesn't matter whether you have pretty sides together or not. Cross grains go in this way. That's what I'm kind of paying attention to right now. And I have a little note here. Add a half an inch. The fold of my fabric, it doesn't matter if it's the fold. I could turn it this way. In fact, I think I'll turn it this way so you don't get confused about what do you do with the fold? So I'm going to go here and pin in. And y'all, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just answering some of the questions that I've had that, that, that y'all have asked, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and cut. I'm not going to cut across this yet. Cut this straight. If you already know how to do all of this stuff, you can just fast forward through this part. All right, so to cut into this little notch, I can come from this side and cut in, which is usually what I like to do, or I can just fold this sideways and cut around 
like this. All right, and the other thing I need to tell you is if you decided that you that you needed a, a bigger ponytail, now you probably need to do this here and here to do this, but you can take, you, just on a piece of paper, you can come from this point, come out about an inch or an inch and a half, and come down about an inch and a half. So what you would do on your extra piece of paper, not from this notch, you would come over to this fullest part, I think I would do an inch, and come out about an inch, and, and so then you would just kind of angle that from here out to about an inch, put an inch here, an inch here, and an inch here. That's for a big fat ponytail, but that's another, I'm not, we're not doing that in, in this video, just giving you some information. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting this around. There we go. All right, so now I have these two pieces and they're gonna look like that. And then I have this top piece. This is my curved edge and I know it's my curved edge because it has a notch at the top. And there's my notch right there. So this is where, the, where it's gonna matter, pretty sides together, all right? So this is my curved edge because it has the notch. And this is my curved edge because it has the notch. So you're gonna want to, and this is a straight edge. So line this up on the straight edge right there and right there. And we're gonna pin that in place and we'll go to the sewing machine. Okay, straight edge cross here, pretty sides together, straight edge, there we go, and we'll go to the sewing machine and sew that together. All right, my presser foot, this is about a quarter of an inch. In. That's the seam allowance on here is a quarter of an inch and so this is mm, just a little under maybe ish. Not It's not three-eighths. Probably need to do it in centimeters. Anyway, so I'm going to stitch a couple of stitches forward. Whoops, it's on zigzag. We don't need zigzag. A couple of stitches forward and backwards. That's called a back stitch and that just keeps it from coming unraveled. And I'm just using this edge of my presser foot as my guide. You can use, oh, there comes the cat. Sit down, girl. Sit down right there. You gotta love those fur babies. Back and forth. All right. Now, you could, if you wanted to, without lifting anything up, go ahead and grab this other side of this and put it right up next to here. And I'm not sewing very far without, the, without fabric under the presser foot. Back stitch. Get the pin out of the way. Back stitch again. I hope my hands were not in the way. I moved my camera to a different angle. So, so now we have a quarter inch seam, I surged my edges, and now I want to uh, top stitch. So I've got both of those edges surged, and I want, and it doesn't really matter whether it goes up or down, but I'm going to turn mine where the seam is towards the top part of the hat cap and I'm going to just do a little close edge stitch uh, and the same thing I mean I, 
and I don't have to backstitch here because there's not going to be any pressure on this at all. And probably now with all of the stitches that are going across here, you probably don't have to backstitch, but it's just a habit that I've gotten into. So close to the edge. Okay, I have my cheater and I have a marks be gone around here someplace but I'm not for sure and look at here what I did you see what I did that says the front that's there for a reason so I'm gonna turn this back to the front back to the front that's almost like back to the future and I'm just gonna mark this with a pencil there and I can see that And just flip that over. Find my little marks and mark with a pencil. I have some little pieces of interfacing that I've cut. And you can see they're not very big. It's just a little bit to stabilize behind the buttonhole. And uh, so if I hold this to the light, just a tiny bit, I can see through this fabric and I can see where that interfacing is and pin in. Now this buttonhole is going to go through only one layer of fabric and it is not for the button. It is for the top of the casing of where you're going to put your uh, ribbon or a tie string through whatever you're going to use to cinch up that ponytail. So just through the one layer of fabric, and it's easier if you do it at the very beginning. All right, my machine has a buttonhole. I'm not going to put the buttonhole foot on here, but I am going to do my buttonhole adjustment. Set the width. And you can, I'm not going to do that as an instruction. You can do, look on your uh, own owner's manual. Oh, I know. What? Read the instructions. Are you kidding me? Do we have to do that really? Sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna line this up, put it in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my pin out. I've got that interfacing underneath. This is my reverse for my buttonhole. So when I get to where I wanna go, And it does its bar tack and then it goes in reverse. There's my hand out of the way and I'm just going to kind of watch and see where I'm coming to. Let go of that and then it finishes it up. All right. sure my interfacing is under there and not curled up underneath. Find my middle. There we go. I'm going to put my needle down in so that I can pull my pin out. You can change thread colors. But what I'm doing right now is a lot of stuff that I have that I want to stitch in white. I'm going to go ahead and get those done. Right there. Put that back up because I'm through with my buttonhole. And so what I want to show you on the back, whoops, of the buttonhole, move this back out of the way. I'm going to trim this excess off, so I don't need that. And then to cut the buttonhole open, you can do it from the front of the back. I like to do it from the back, no particular reason why. And then just kind of clip into that, fold it in half, clip in to make sure you don't cut your stitches.
and if you want to you can trim this this excess away too because it does you, it's not important now this was just to stabilize the buttonhole and that's what I was talking about because this folded under a little bit but it's not a big deal we'll just cut that away I have gotten so many comments, compliments, uh, ideas, and y'all that are sewing on, for the people that are on the front lines, you know, it's like, how do we serve, you know, staying at home? This has just been the such a huge blessing for me to be able to, to bless y'all, to bless your family members and your friends and co-workers with uh, scrub caps. Your pattern has two markings on it. You've got a dot right here. And you want to transfer that to your fabric, both sides, both of those little curves. And there's a dot in the tip of the crown piece. All right. And so you're going to transfer that, and it's right here. And I'm going to pin that only just this one side. So I have all of this rest of this length here. And my notch is here. You can pin this all the way around if you want to, but I'm going to show you what I do and it may and if you d decide to do it like I'm doing it, it might take you a couple of little times to get the rhythm right and you may put your stitch length long so if you have to take it out it's not going to be a big deal to take it out but but because of the stretch in the fabric and because we cut it on the cross grain this has stretch because that's bias this has stretch this has stretch because it's on the cross grain we're going to get into an area right in here that there's not any stretch, and then at the top there's going to be stretch again. So we're going to we're going to we're going to do a little bit of stretching as we stitch. All right, so I'm going to put my needle, drop my needle down into that area right there where that dot is. Go ahead and get that pin out. I'm going to do a couple of do a back stitch, a couple of stitches forward, press that down, a couple of stitches back, and I'm going to pull on this bottom layer a little bit to ease this in. There's no gathers in this part of it. And I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on that now. And as I come around this corner, I want to work this top, this fullness. I'm not pulling on the top at all, on the crown part at all. And I'm going to kind of watch, there's my notch and there's my notch, and see if I'm going to kind of come out even here. Can you see that? There's my notches. And I'm just putting some pressure on it again on this bottom piece, and so I'm going to continue that all the way around, doing the, the same amount of pressure and manipulation coming around the, the bend. Gosh, it reminds me of old folk songs. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Oh my gosh. Was that a flashback? Still pulling on this just a little bit. Manipulating that in. I'm on that straight edge on this part now. And it doesn't have any stretch to it at all. Make sure you don't stitch your finger. I've done that before. That's not fun. All right, so as I get here, I can kind of see that I'm going to end up just about right. This needs a little bit more pull for me to end up with the dot that's on this bottom with the dot on the top. So here we go. We're on, almost finished with this part. Stitch right down to that dot, back stitch. This is how this is going to look. You're either just going to be touching or almost touching right there. And so on the right side, 
this is how it looks. It's got this little piece right here, but I'm going to show you what to do with that in just a sec. Got that little piece. I'll show you what to do with that. But right now I'm going to go surge. I like using I like using the serger to get me a nice clean edge, but you don't have to do that. You can zigzag it or uh, you know use pinking shears or something like that. All right. So on my other video, what I showed you to do was to come in here and stitch from here down around this way. But what I've discovered that I like to do, since I've made some of these, a bunch of these now, is I like to go from the straight edge of the cap and work back into that little point. And again, because we're working on kind of stretchy fabric, not stretchy fabric, but, but, the, but the bias edge of the fabric, this works pretty good. So I'm going to stitch forward and backward. You can pin this. Even that up. All right. As I come around to where this little thing was I was telling you about, I'm going to pull this out to make sure I don't get it caught in my seam. So it kind of does a little fold. It's not really important. It's just out of the way. Because I'm gonna, I want to stitch right to that point right there. That stitch right there. And back stitch. Okay. So that's what it looks like when you bring them together and on the right side, let's see if I did this right, this is what it looks like on the right side. So you've got the little puff for the ponytail, you've got that caught, the little tip is caught there. All right, and so now I'm going to serge this and then we'll do the band for the front part of the cap. All right, to do the band, you can press this if you want to, but you don't have to. I am going to measure. I'm going to do a, an inch and a fourth and put a pin, but I'm going to turn it under like a fourth of an inch. And you can, you can measure it to make sure it's an inch if you want to just be OCD about it or you can just make sure that it's turned under. But that's about what I've allowed for that turn under. It's about a quarter of an inch. Now whenever I get around here to the buttonhole, that buttonhole is going to be right on the edge. Pin that under. And I may be a little bit off on this, so uh, that's just a little bit over an inch, not quite an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and an eighth. And then my center front, I want it at an inch and a quarter. There's the center. And there's my inch and a quarter. Let me move that so that you can see that's my inch and a quarter. I was surging the edges and then turning it down and I discovered that it takes me just as long to just turn it and get a nice clean finish as it does to surge that edge. And so this will turn under just a little bit, a little quarter of an inch turn. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this in place and uh, I'm going to just turn this as I go. You can pin it but I'm just going to show you this. So I'm going to start at the bottom of the ponytail part. Get my hand out of the way. Put the needle in, pull that pin out. I don't need this one anymore. and make sure that I'm not going to stitch to the rest of my cap. And I'm just going to use my finger to push that under that little quarter of an inch turn under.
and I'm just taking a little stitch. I mean, a close to the edge stitch. That's what I was. I didn't mean a little stitch. It's an average length stitch, but just it's just close to the edge. <clears throat> There's a ton of videos out there uh, for doing this. I'm just one more of the patch. Just each of us doing our part. So I got to looking about in during the war, the big wars, about people on the home front saving Greece and I thought did they just was that just something to do to occupy their minds while their husbands and their boys were off at war and no it wasn't it they actually used that Greece the people turned it in and they used it in the munitions plants so it was actually a real it was a real deal so it wasn't just something to keep their hands occupied keep their minds busy something that they could do at home to help out. And back stitch to stop. While I'm here, while we're in this little section, I am going to go ahead and turn this. And there's our little buttonholes for our casing to go through. For our, This forms the casing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark where the buttons need to go. So I've got it folded in half, line this up, and I've got this, this one that's six and a half by two and three fourths. So it doesn't really matter, it doesn't whether it's the front or the back or the it's not like the other thing. Here's my pencil. And put a little mark. Flip that over. There we go. I want to cut, I'm going to cut some ties instead of using ribbon because if there's a shortage of ribbon and there's a shortage of, of elastic so I'm going to show you an alternative. Now, if you want to use ribbon and elastic you can watch my other video and you can see how to do that. So I'm just going to kind of even up my edge here. I'm still on the cross grain of the fabric and I'm going to measure two inches. Flip this back over and where is my two inch mark there it is right there okay go this way I'm trying to see which side I want to cut from there we go there's one I'm going to cut two pieces of this. And you can go a little bit wider if you want to, if you wanted to go, you know, an inch and uh, two and a quarter inches or even further than that, you could do that. So now I have two pieces and this is going to make my ties. I'm going to stitch this together at the end, right sides together on one, just just like that, and then I'm going to go to the ironing board. So I'm going to stitch this together right like that, right there, quarter inch. And to make this tie, I'm going to press this seam open. I just went and stitched that little quarter inch seam there. Okay. Then I'm going to fold this in half and press it.
and then I'm going to fold it in half again. Now I'm going to go the entire length, but maybe you can see without me doing the whole entire length uh, on how to do this. All right, so you're going to press this, and then on the other side, and it depends on what works the best for you, you can press from this side and move your iron over to this side, going into that fold, and if that doesn't seem to work for you, then turn it around and press from the front side. Okay, whatever works for you, however it is. Once you make a couple of these, you'll kind of get your own rhythm going. Now, the other thing I want to show you is the finish of the ends. And so you're going to turn this in and press it. And then turn that back again. There and there and then fold it in half and press that again and then we'll go and stitch this. I'm going to go ahead and finish pressing this the whole entire length of both of those pieces of fabric and this is what we're going to use as a drawstring instead of so I don't know if you could see me so I'm pressing the whole thing again All right and then we'll stitch this. This is what we're going to use as a drawstring instead of using ribbon and elastic. This is all pressed and ready to stitch. I have those ends turned under like that and then maybe just kind of tuck some of that little extra roughage in. And because I'm going through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers of fabric, I want to just kind of walk this to start off. And I am not changing my thread. I'm going to go ahead. I could have changed to pink. But I'm going to go ahead. I've got top stitching on the band in uh, white. So what I'm going to do is go down the length. I'm going to go back with the back stitch. Come back around. Get to that corner and pivot. I've got threads everywhere. And just do the entire length of this tie. Now, this is not where I'm going to end, so I don't really have to back stitch, but I think I will just so that the two ends match. Get to the corner, pivot, and because I've got the, I don't have to do this, it's just an extra thing.
there's our top. Now, normally, if you're using elastic, you would have three and a half inches of elastic, and you would measure up three inches, and that's where you would put your mark for your elastic, you know, so it's all bunched up. But we're going to pretend like we don't have elastic anymore because mostly we don't have elastic anymore. I think maybe Amazon has started shipping some elastic, and I still have some that I have hoarded from before. Anyway, big safety pin. We're going to go into this. All right, we can feel the fullness of our middle. We want that here too. That's gonna to be a whole lot of fullness back there, but that's okay. There it is right there. So as it starts to come through, and I can feel that with my, with my thumb, I can feel where that thickness is. right there so I'm getting really close and it doesn't have to be like right smack on there but I would sure like it pretty pretty close all right so now and I don't I don't, I'm not going to try to stitch through all of that I can feel the fullness of that seam is right over here if y'all are wondering about that I've got a broken nail <laughs> and since the you know who's are closed the nail salons are closed well Put that on there to keep it from snagging on everything. I'm sure you were wondering about that. Why does she have a French manicure on one thumb and not on the other? Oh well. Anyway, so right here, I'm going to stitch in the ditch or close to the ditch and catch that tie. So what this is going to allow, instead of having the elastic to draw that up, then just the, the tie will cinch up to go around that ponytail. So you don't have to have the elastic. It's nice if you do, but if you don't, then this works. Let's get that untwisted there. It's okay. There we go. All right, and then so this is going to, you would put your buttons in right here. And whenever I put a button in, I put a, a P, and I'm not going to do that on this video. I am going to put a button on here, but I'm not going to do it on this video because you know how to sew a button on. I sure hope you know how to sew a button on. But I'm going to put a piece of interfacing right behind that so that that would be, so it's not just holding in straight into the fabric so that it has some little support uh, for that button, okay? Okay, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, it was a little slow. I slowed down uh, quite a bit. I still need to sew the buttons on this. Using two fat quarters or some of your scraps. Uh, if you haven't downloaded the pattern, it's over on myhallcloset.com in the <clears throat> resource library. And again, you have to subscribe to my website e email list to get the free pattern. But uh, anyway, like, subscribe here and over there and uh, give me a little thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Y'all stay safe and stay well. Bye.